The auto bailout's infuriating a range of stakeholders who argued all along that the government was orchestrating the bailouts to give the unions more power. Some say all the power. Ron Bloom, the White House's cars are formerly a leader of the Steelworkers Union, reportedly admitting as much twice, saying, I am doing all this for the unions. But Bloom changed his story under oath. Take a listen. Did you say this at a dinner? There was a dinner, uh, and it was reported by uh, uh, David Shepardson, Washington correspondent for the Detroit News, uh, at a farewell dinner of the auto task force held in the restaurant Rosa Mexicano in late July 2009 that you allegedly said, I did this all for the unions. No, I did not say that. You didn't say that? No, sir. So you were misquoted by the... That's the correct. Oh, boy. Well, tonight, Bloom is backtracking. The Wall Street Journal's Lee Hawkins and National oh. Legal and Policy Center's Mark <laughs> Modica join us now already. Uh, you're, you're, but I want to go to Mark first. How does all this strike you, Mark? The fact that this guy is, is admitting, or at least admitted at, under one set of circumstances, that he did it all for the unions. Well, th these guys haven't been very upfront from the beginning, so it doesn't surprise me that he didn't tell the truth about his comments. But what really doesn't surprise me is that, the, that there was an admission that there was favoritism to the UAW. If you looked at the deal that was cut uh, and what happened to the GM bondholders, as well as other classes, um, they were subordinated to the interest of the politically powerful UAW. And, Lee, it, it, it wasn't only the, the bondholders. Delphi no. Corporation, the suppliers to a lot of the car companies, exactly. they lost 70 percent of their pensions. Right. The union lost zip. And that they got was, it all. That was one of the big reasons that they did this congressional hearing, to look into the way that the bailout was handled and the winners and the losers. And the clear pension losers were the Delphi salaried workers in this case. Absolutely. So, now, now, let me just uh, bring up the fact that he has, Bloom has uh, sort of changed his story now, admitting that the testimony he gave, and I believe it was under oath, so, so that could be prosecuted. Yes. Uh, and, and I'm going to quote now, was given the amount of time, this is what he said yesterday in a letter uh, from the White House, given the amount of time that has passed since the dinner in July 2009 and the fact that others may have a different recollection, I cannot say with absolute certainty, as he did in the hearings, that I did not make the alleged comment. So he is backtracking, Mark, but are you thinking yeah. of suing him? Well, no, but David, let me say, in the beginning, the, the task force said they were trying to restructure GM and Chrysler outside of bankruptcy. Steve Ratner even says in his book that they were lying to the American public. There were no intentions of doing this outside of bankruptcy. They had planned all along to what they were going to do and how they were going to protect the UAW. So this was well planned out, and it's very deceptive. He's being deceptive now that he can't remember saying and it. But Lee, the truth he is that this now was done for the UAW. He is now essentially admitting, though, that he lied under oath because you saw his testimony. Yeah. He was absolutely yeah. sure. He said, no, 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 I never said it. No way. Let me tell you one thing, David. I've been a reporter for more than a decade at three different newspapers. If anyone ever said... I didn't say what Lee Hawkins wrote that I said I would be suing them for defamation of character. You could ruin your because career. that is all that we have. When you say that we, did, that we fabricated a quote, okay, you're messing with our careers. And in it this gets case, you mad. Yeah, it, it does because that's all we have, right? And, and so when I look at this situation, all it says is the UAW, the politically powerful UAW, uh, played a role in helping these companies to go down. When you look at, when I covered uh, General Motors, I saw the unions uh, employing people in the job banks that basically were doing nothing. Right. I saw people smoking on assembly lines and then handing in well, five billion. Well, now we billion. see that we're even worse. We see them smoking dope outside yeah. of the crisis. So five billion dollars in health care costs compared to the Japanese that didn't have that. And so this is why this is not a funny joke. Right. Hey, Mark, very quickly, this guy is, is, is not out of public service. He is still a White House advisor yeah. now advising on manufacturing. Uh, yeah. Should this, all, be, all cause, should this be cause for him to leave government service? Uh, you know, I think it's cause for, all of, for Obama and all his cronies to get out. Yeah. I mean, it's up to the American people to decide. You've been lied to. These guys are all deceptive. Um, you have bailouts that are designed to protect politically powerful uh, people like the UAW. So it's up to the people to decide. I, I don't think just Bloom should be out of there. I think, uh, you know, Ob Obama and everybody else who orchestrated this whole farce should all, should all be out all of right, there. All right, guys, thank you very much. We have to leave it like that. Have a great weekend, Mark and Lee.